in this episode, we're going to have a look at Airy OS. Now, one of the neat things that I like about going on distro watch is that I get an opportunity to look at some different distributions that are out there. Now, since my blog is dedicated to Windows users who are looking for an alternative user experience and are looking towards Linux, what I'm doing is I've been going through and looking at several distributions that are geared towards being user friendly and this is one of them. Now I had an opportunity to, to page through this earlier today and there were a number of things I really liked about this operating system that I decided to incorporate into the operating system that I'm running. For instance, instead of having a panel be a bar across the top or across the bottom that Genome typically has. They're using the Avant Window Navigator and this has their, their um, notification area here and then they have this nice panel right here on the side which is very easy to navigate. You can see here you have a standard navigation menu. and there are a number of applications that are installed. Now, that's what I did actually with, with my, um, I got rid of my panels and I did the same thing. I downloaded the Avant Window Navigator and I've customized it to my liking, except I have my own navigation menu, which is Cardapio. I highly recommend this one, but it's all a matter of, it's all a matter of personal preference. and. That's the nice thing about Linux. You can highly customize it, and it's really easy to do. And the thing is, if you really don't know how to do it, there's plenty of answers on Ubuntu support forums. I actually just type my question into Google Ubuntu, Cardapio, and then AWN, which is the Avant Window Navigator, and I found out how to do it. It's that simple. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at the left navigation menu. You have an icon that will hide all your icons, or hide all the windows and just show the desktop. And then you have the file browser launcher. I like this one. You press the button and it gives you a choice of where you would like to go. So if you want to go into your documents folder, you could do that right from this menu. I thought that was kind of neat. Then you have access to your terminal for issuing commands. Let me see uh, what kernel this is running. Okay, and this is running the 2.6.38. This is a pretty good kernel because it'll run uh, m most hardware that's out there. Personally, on my Linux distribution, I'm running Bleeding Edge 3.04, but the thing is, this should run uh, most items that you would plug into your system. So this is very nice as well. Also, this comes with Firefox web browser. I'm not sure which version this is, but let's have a quick look and see. There we go. Let me see if it will actually tell me. Oh, it looks like it has a bunch of really cool plugins in on this too. Ah, and it's running Firefox 6. Okay, 7 is out already. Um, but I imagine that if you update your repositories, you can get the latest version. Very nice. The only thing I didn't care for is the positioning of the uh, open, close, and um, close and minimize buttons on the left hand side I prefer the right but that's easily changed in your in your theme manager and a nice little clock here and it shows the calendar I also opted for that but I changed the look of mine and I have that here very nice though very nice indeed Okay, well, let's have a look at some of the applications that we have available to us. In Arios, in Accessories, we have the Avant Window Navigator, which I just discussed, a calculator, a character map for inserting special characters into documents that you're typing, a clipboard manager, a disk utility manager. You can um, 
the, there's a dock bar X, which is this up here on my on my uh, panel. It's not set up in this, but you can uh, select to put that in as a plugin. You have uh, gedit for uh, editing your text files and a number of other really cool things in here. Okay, in graphics, you have uh, the GIMP, you have Pinta, which I think is an easier tool to use than the GIMP, and a few other little things here. In Internet, you have a choice. If you don't like Firefox, you can use Google Chrome, uh, the Pigeon Instant Messenger, Skype, Thunderbird, Transmission, you get. Hmm. Never heard of that one. And uh, your freedom. Browse the internet anonymously. Well, I do know I'm going to have to check that one out uh, in the Synaptic Panage Package Manager. I never thought of downloading one of those. Okay, in an office, we, of course, get the LibreOffice Suite. My, in my opinion, I believe that is the best one available. In programming, we have Gini and... Okay, a fast and lightweight IDE using GTK2. Not really much into programming, but that's cool. Okay, and then Brazero, Clementine. We have GNOME, Handbrake for uh, for uh, converting your video files. OpenShot Video Editor. I have a tutorial online showing how to make a video, so check that out if you get a chance. A sound recorder, and then of course the VLC media player, which just so happens to be the best uh, media player uh, for Linux. Okay, and then in system tools, we have the configuration editor, Deja Dupe. Now, this is a really neat program for backing up your user, your user files, so that if you accidentally mess something up, you can restore your settings. Really nice program. Okay, and then we have we have uh, the Grub Customizer. Very nice for if you want to customize your uh, the Grub Loader that starts when the computer boots up. Okay, we have a file indexing controller. VM we have VirtualBox for managing your virtual machines. Uh, Super Boot Manager. Never heard of this one. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> okay, and there is no root password in this distro, so let's have a look. Okay, and we're going to choose English, of course. No, I just want to see what the Super Boot Manager does. Okay. Ah, cool! With this utility, you will be able to actually customize your own boot screens. Okay, very neat. Some some uh, distributions use Plymouth, some use Berg. I know um, my particular distro doesn't even have a splash screen on it. Not that it really bothers me because I leave my computer on all the time. Okay, but that's good to know. Alright, and we'll close this and we'll go back into the menus and see what else we have here. We've looked at the system tools. Oh, another neat little program is this UNetBootin. Now, UNetBootin is great for making live USBs in Linux. Now, in a previous tutorial on my site, I show you how to make live, how to make a live USB drive in Windows. Well, this program uh, will do that in Linux, and it's very simple and very easy to use. Okay, and then we have Wine, uh, already pre-installed with Wine Tricks. I would recommend also downloading Play on Linux if you get this one. And then, of course, the Ubuntu Software Center, which has available all of the um, programs that you could ever want. I'm just curious to see if they've loaded any PPAs into this. Okay, yes, they do have some PBA, PPAs 
uh, in here so you can get some fresh up-to-date items and uh, Okay, excellent. Lots of really cool things in here. So I recommend that you check this out. This looks like a really nice distribution for beginners. Um, I, I'm running this as a live CD. I didn't install it into a virtual machine, just wanted to play around with it. But if you're looking for a lightweight distribution, um, it looks like this one would do the trick. Um, it is running GNOME though, so I'd recommend having at least an up-to-date processor, but if you want something that's a little bit more lightweight, maybe I would suggest going with Ubuntu. Okay, well that's all I have for now. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you again next time.